trying to make a shelter. Ah! Look at these ants. There's no. Oh my god. Why? Psych, man. What's going on, doggies? Welcome back to another video. Welcome to a legit solo surviving video. I have no food, no water, no shelter for possibly the next three, if we find water, maybe four to five days. All right, we are currently steaming our way through this vegetation, super prickly. Um, look at this, we're right next to the beach now. Actually a lot harder to get here than I thought. Bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. Haven't even ste stepped foot on the beach and I've already got cuts all over me, but we're finally here and um, this is where we're going to be stranded for the next couple of days. Alrighty, this is it. This is the island or this is the beach that I want to try to do this challenge on. So I'll quickly just show you guys exactly what I've got in the bag. Just so we're all exactly clear what's going on here. And um, I'll tell you the reason why I want to do this challenge. There is a reason behind it. So we've got one knife. This is the knife that you guys will always see in the videos. We've got one knife, a GoPro head mount, a waterproof box. This cannot be used for anything except for storing batteries. So I have batteries and I have um, batteries and a spare GoPro in there. That's all that's in that box and I can't use it for any sort of survival situation. It's just for filming. And that's pretty much all we've got. We've got a power bank to charge the GoPro. And that is absolutely everything we've got on this island. Lately, I've been doing a lot of fishing out here off of boats. We actually fish at the back of this island. And as we're fishing, it always runs through my head. If something goes wrong, there is no safety equipment on these boats. So I always think to myself, if I was to get water, if the boat was to capsize or the boat was to sink and I was able to swim ashore onto this island, would I be able to survive if I was just to be able to grab a bag and just have something just like a knife. So that's the whole reason behind this video. If I was to get stuck out there while I'm fishing, something happens and we swam ashore, would we be, would we be able to survive on one of these little beaches for the next two to three days? So that's the idea behind this challenge. And um, look, I got, no, I got absolutely no idea what's gonna happen. It's just you, me, and this beach. So um, I suppose I'm just gonna walk up and down this coastline. It's a fair bit of rubbish. Pick up a pair of shoes is the first thing I'm gonna do because my feet are on fire. And then um, we'll just go from there. All right, there is absolutely no shortage of shoes around here. That looks like a banger. Look at that, man. That's good, a little bit small, but I'm happy with that. What else we got? All right, we've been here for about two and a half seconds and we've already got ourselves a good pair of work boots here. One thong, one super dodge flip-flop thing. So um, there is no shortage of shoes. There never is in Indonesia. All right, quick walk up and down this beach. This is absolutely not what I expected. With the tide being so high, it's gonna be very, very hard to even try to make a shelter here. I have upgraded my shoe already. This is absolutely, that is the most perfect fit on my foot. And it's um, very, very protecting on my foot. So that's the first thing you wanna look after your feet, especially when you're on these rocks, sharp stuff. I just slipped over just then. So it's very important, but it's taken me the good half of a day just to get here. And um, the sun's already pretty much straight up at 12 o'clock. So I've got about another four to five hours of sunlight before that sun disappears over the trees there. So we've got to make the most of this sun right now. And um, what I'm going to do, there is no shortage of plastic bottles on this beach. These plastic bottles, I'm going to try a technique of gathering water. I've never tried it before. I don't even know if it works. So um, this is definitely an experiment, but uh, I'm going to go collect a heap of these bottles. We'll start cutting them up, fill them up with a little bit of salt water 
and I'll show you guys how it works. And um, fingers crossed we can get a little bit of water before that sun goes down this afternoon. And then we'll start concentrating on building a house or a shelter or something. All right. So there's no shortage of plastic bottles on these beaches. It's like they say, another man's trash is another man's treasure. That is for sure. So take your big bottles. I'm trying to find the, cl the cleanest bottles possible. A lot of these bottles, they smell like petrol. That might help us out later, but we need these clean bottles. So cut the bottom of the bottle off. Always keeping every, that's gonna be a perfect cup for drinking water later. If it rains, it'll catch water. That's something perfect, but what we're gonna want is our bottles like this. We're gonna fold it up into itself. Okay, so once you've folded that bottle up inside itself, you can see there that there's a lip about the size of my finger running around the bottle there. You take this smaller size bottle, we're gonna cut the lid off that. Right. Always keep that as well. This, we're gonna fill up with salt water. This will go inside here, like this. What's gonna happen? The condensation from that there, this is gonna turn into like a hot room. The condensation from that bottle full of salt water should start sticking to the outside of this big bottle. As the condensation runs down, it's gonna get stuck it's going to get stuck on this lip we formed here and hopefully by the end of the day there'll be a little bit of a ring of water fresh drinking water around the bottle of that rim so i'm going to go make about as many of these as i can 10 20 30 i'm going to probably spend the next two hours making these Just stick them up in there with the salt water sit them in the sun hopefully over the duration of the day it starts getting hot this starts all the fresh water will get stuck to the outside the condensation You'll give it a little bit of a flick every now and then, it'll run down and it'll get stuck on this lip you've made. At the end of the day, all you've got to do is unscrew that lid there. The water's going to run down into the bottle. Hopefully, we've got a little bit of drinking water. What I am finding on this beach right now, which is very, very bloody tempting to drink because I'm already super parched, are these bottles have a little bit of liquid in each of them and they don't smell, it just smells like water. It doesn't smell like anything bad. So what I'm gonna, what I'm doing is, everything that I find like that, I'm just gonna pour into one bottle. I'm gonna keep collecting this water because this is like legit. I don't have drinking water on me right now. So that there could possibly save my life. I'm here for three days, four days, maybe four, maybe five days if this water catchment works. So what I'm gonna start doing is collecting every single bit of drip on every bottle that I find, as well as making these condensation water traps and. Um, that's all I'm doing. It's going to take me a couple, probably an hour or two to make as many as I can. And then um, I suppose after we do that, food is my least problem. Next is going to be building a shelter. And um, it doesn't look very easy to build a shelter here either. So anyway, that's what, I'm, that's, what, that's what we're up to. Collecting the water in the bottom of these used bottles and uh, making these condensation water traps. This is our water farm. So each of these bottles has got the salt water with a big bottle over the top. The bottoms are all bent up to catch the condensation and um, they're working pretty good. So you can see this bottle's con completely condensated up. Those drips of water there, that is fresh drinking water. So each one of them are condensating perfectly like they should be. I'm gonna give this to the afternoon until the sun's gone and we'll come. We'll give them a bit of a flick. Hopefully all the water runs down and catches in that little bent up part of the bottom there. But I don't know. It's not gonna give me a lot of water, but it will definitely give us a little bit of something.
All right, so we've got what I would call the start of a very, very basic shelter going on here. I don't want to make this thing waterproof. I don't think it's going to rain. It looks absolutely bluebird skies. Very, very hot right now, but it is Indonesia. Who knows? One minute it's sunny, next minute it rains. This is sort of the sort of shelter I'm going to go for this time. Just a very, very basic shelter. The reason that I've built it this way is because roughly that direction is east. So as that sun comes up, that sun is going to be pushing light into where I sleep tonight. But obviously, that's when I'm going to be most active is in the morning when it's cool. We'll be walking around, looking for food, gathering ways to collect water. Once that sun's up at 12 o'clock, it's in its peak of heat. I can hide under there. And then the rest of that sun for the rest of the day is going to give me this good shadow here. I can hang out in here, I can chill, try to start a fire. So that's the reasoning why I've anchored it this way. But I don't think it's going to rain. It looks pretty good. Nice, flat, big surface here. Good place to sleep. I'm going to go see if I can lay a couple of thongs down or make a pillow out of thongs or rubbish. But this is where we had the uh, water bottles before. Now they're down there in the sun. Steaming up, getting all juicy for our afternoon drink. Pretty bloody good. Have a look at this. All right, so this is actually turned into quite the bedroom now. So the real reason behind a little shelter like this is purely because it's not going to rain. I'm 80% sure there will be no rain tonight. It's just that little bit of security at night. Instead of just sleeping here on the sand, this is a little bit of security. You know what I mean? You've got that little wall. You just feel a little bit more safe. Obviously, I'm out here all by myself in the middle of absolutely nowhere. So. This just makes you feel that little bit better. We found a bit of foam that's going to work out as a perfect pillow. And then there's actually enough rubber matting and junk on this beach to make a full size mattress there. So that's obviously where I'm going to sleep tonight. Perfect. We've got five star views. Look at that. Wake up to that in the morning. Our little bottles are all over here. Still steaming away. And as you guys can see, that tide is absolutely ripping out. So. That is very, very good. Once that tide gets low, hopefully we can walk around the rock pools, try to find crabs, crustaceans, sea urchins, something to have for dinner. It doesn't matter how many times you walk up and down this tiny little beach, you'll always find something that you miss. So walking around here, found a bloody helmet, didn't I? I don't know how this is gonna come in handy, but um, I'm sure it will. Everything comes in handy somehow. So what I'm trying to do now is walk around. What I'd love to do is build some kind of a fish trap. Put, once this tide sucks right out, put the fish trap out there. Um, the only problem is that there's not a lot of resources on this beach. There actually really isn't a lot of stuff. So my main source, my main thing in my head right now is water and just looking fashionable. So, oh. All I can do is just keep searching, think of ways to build sort of some sort of a fish trap where a fish can maybe swim in, but I can't get back out. I'm talking like little fish, bait fish, crabs. I don't know, that's, that's my next goal before the sun sets. Things are changing for the worst. Like things are just changing like this fast. So I'm just walking around. I'm trying to find a glass bottle. I really, really need to find a glass bottle because look at this thing in the background, man. That thing right there is a big storm front and it's coming. I hope it comes this way. I hope it pisses down with rain because I'll be able to collect water. But the other problem, the negative side of that is there is no sun right now. So 
our, our plastic bottles which are full of salt water right now are not working. So I'm scavenging through the rubbish again. I'm lifting up rocks. I'm trying to find a glass bottle. If I can find a glass bottle, we'll try to start it. We'll try to get a bow drill. We'll try to start a fire. We'll boil the water like we'll boil the water. We'll get the condensation that comes from the water for drinking water. But um, right now, this is just there's just nothing useful on this beach. Maybe I'm going to have to venture like up over that hill to the next beach or fingers crossed it rains. That's all I can hope for. I don't really know what else to do right now. We're going to lose light too. We're going to lose light as well. It's actually afternoon's getting on. That tide's really, really sucking out. It's all happening right now. Nothing's ever easy out here in the nature, but it is epic. I am enjoying myself. I'm just extremely thirsty. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I am counting on the rain now. I'm literally counting on the rain. That's the water that I've got left from the water that I scavenged out of all the bottles on this beach. So that is it. Oh, it's amazing. You don't understand how good that feels. Okay, so what I've done here, I'm hoping, I'm praying that that storm front over there Hold, it holds enough water and it comes this way. So I've been for a walk through the bush. I can't find any kind of leaves with a big radius so I can catch water. All the leaves are like this. Obviously you guys see this, we use it all the time. Goat's foot, it's just these little leaves. We've got palm leaves in the back there, but they're obviously palm. They're so, so thin. There is nothing with a wide enough, with a wide enough clearance that's gonna catch water. So. I've pulled my bedroom apart and I've made this. I've made like a slip and slide. <laughs> so with any luck, it is gonna absolutely bucket down. This is about 60 centimeters wide and then coming down here goes to about 30 centimeters wide there. So that's gonna catch water. The water's gonna obviously run down, run all the way down there and into our bottle. So I really hope it rains because right now, like I said, these little bottles are doing absolutely nothing right now. This is our only way of really catching water. Can't find glass bottles on this beach. Honestly, can't really find a lot on this beach. So that is going to work if it rains. That will definitely collect a little bit of water. I'm still going to work on it a little bit. It's a little, I've just thrown that together within a couple of seconds, but I'll put a little bit more hard work into that. I'll make sure that it is 100% water catching device. So if it does rain, fingers crossed it rains, we catch water and um, I'm really, really gonna have to put my thinking cap on and start thinking of ways to get water. I don't know, let's just think. I thought there would have been a lot more rubbish on this beach than there is, but um, there isn't. All right, so this, this bit of bamboo is what we found before. It's absolutely covered in bits of string. It's, co it's covered in fishing line. I just noticed that there is a, this is actually really dope. I don't think we're gonna get to use it, but this is something that you definitely want to find when you're out here with nothing. If I can get it off, this could possibly be an absolute lifesaver. It is a homemade, hold on, I'll just cut it off so you guys can have a look. It's a homemade squid jig. So some Indonesian blokes, obviously, look at that, it's like being sewed together with fishing line. It actually still has, I can clean some of this rubbish off. It actually still has the hooks on there, look at that. There is no way of connecting line to it. The snivel, swivel's been snapped off, but we can probably repair that. And there is fishing line all tangled up in this big bird's nest of line. So that is gonna co possibly could come in handy tomorrow, but it's just a mess in here. What I'm doing, I'm not gonna wait for the rain. I've set up the rain trap. It's ready to go. If it rains, we're definitely gonna be catching water, but I cannot just rely on the rain those bottles aren't working anymore and I am so thirsty like you don't understand how thirsty I am right now so we're gonna take a little bit of this rope I'm gonna wrap wrap some plastic around my legs I'll explain to you guys why in a minute and we're gonna go bush see if we can find coconuts see if we can find some kind of a water source because I can't waste my time just sitting around waiting for rain no way man <laughs> look <laughs> it's raining! No, dude! It's pissing down with rain! 
Oh my God. Somebody is looking after me today. Look at this. Get off there. It's raining. Holy shit. I never would have thought. It is actually raining. <laughs> All right. I've set up my water catchment. It's going to work. This rain has to, it's only light rain, but come on, come on, you big dog. Look at it all. Look at the sky. <laughs> this is the best feeling in the world. I don't care if I have to be wet tonight. I don't care about anything. Water. Look at this. It's already working. Look at it. Look at it. Every single drip there is going into there. Look at that. It's dripping. It's filling. Oh, yes. Yes. Check that out. That's not a lot of water. But right now, that is that means everything to me right now. That you don't understand. Come on, you big dog. Peace on me right now. Let's go. Look at it. Come on. Absolutely peace on me. This is what I need, man. I was just about to go for a walk into the bush. That's why I was cutting that string up. I'll show you why I was cutting up that string. What I was gonna do, because this bush is full of pandanus palm and it's full of these little leaves with like these big needles on them. So I've already sliced my legs up twice on the walk in here. So I was gonna strap this rubber to my leg, <laughs> make like a pair of jeans, tape it to my legs. And I was just gonna walk bush until we either find a coconut, but there is no coconuts here. I was just gonna walk bush, but We've got water and it's actually working. All right, the next step. Have a look at this, this is actually really sick. This brings back memories of when I was a little kid. Do you guys ever eat these biscuits? So good, man. I think this one was my favorite when I was a kid. This one. I just found this box. It's obviously rusted, but it's still a good tin. It's actually a tin, it's not a box. I saw it this morning, but I didn't think I had any use for it, but this is gonna come in super handy now. So if I can get it open. Oh, I can't believe it's raining, I It's, I What's in here? That is absolutely amazing. So we've just got a rusted up, a rusted up old tin. But the reason that I've got this tin, so, Last time I did a challenge like this, we were just, it, it just worked out lucky. We found a pillowcase, a plastic bag, which we used as a, as a still, we, we saved water. But there was a couple of things in that video which I didn't think ahead. And I've got to think ahead now because we've got a couple of more days on this beach here. Hopefully, we're, what is that, man? We're definitely collecting a little bit of water. We've got over, over a mouthful of water in the bottle now, which is unbelievable. The rain's coming, it's going. But what I've got to do, I've got to collect coconut husks. And these are pretty dry. They're not 100% dry, but they are very, very dry. So that's what I'm going to use the tin for. We're just going to chuck as many coconut husks as we can into this tin. Chuck the lid on it. That is going to be completely waterproof overnight. So um, if it does piss down with rain tonight, or if it's raining like it is now, all the materials on this beach are going to be wet to start a fire either tonight or tomorrow morning. So running around grabbing these coconuts, ripping off these super dry, beautiful husks, and that's gonna help us tomorrow start a fire. I don't even think I'm gonna bother starting a fire tonight. Gosh! But that stuff there, that's gonna, it's so dry and crusty, we just gotta keep it dry, so. Lucky to find this tin. I haven't seen a tin like that in like, I don't know, 20 years or something. Surely they don't make these anymore. Look at that. Well, I used to eat these when I was a fat little kid, man. Ah. All right, I've just had a quick scavenge on the reef. We've got about 15 minutes of light left. It is gonna be completely, completely pitch black. I've just walked around the reef. Look at that tide. It is completely gone, completely dead tide. It is 6.15 in the afternoon right now. It's just about to go dark and, um, Unfortunately, I was looking for like some kind of food I can eat without starting a fire, but it looks like we're not eating food tonight. I'm just gonna have to go hungry. Tomorrow's a day of hunting food, starting fire, all that kind of biz, but I pretty much spent the whole entire afternoon 
working on the shelter. It is no longer a little shelter. It is now the Hilton of this island. It is so bloody good. I'm going to have a good sleep, man. I've put a little bit of time and effort into it and it is going to be, I'm going to have a bloody good sleep. Have a look at this. Welcome to the Hilton. Nah, it's still pretty dodgy, but what I've done, I've done three layers of leaves now. So if it rains, which I think it's going to, should be pretty dry in here. There's a few gaps, but I mean, hey, we're humans, we're waterproof. That really doesn't matter. But one thing that I did notice when it was raining is that the wind was coming from out there, coming in here, and it was like circulating. So I've just chucked these big bits of wood there where my head's going to be, and then these two blocks where my body's going to lay. So I'm just going to lay down in there. Beautiful. Got me pillow. We've got our tin full of dry coconut husk and the bloody water. This is amazing, dude. Check this out. All right, so I've already had two big mouthfuls of this water because I'm confident we're going to get more. And um, that's what we're left with now. It's a little bit, it's not exactly very, it's like super, obviously it's rainwater, it's clean, but there's a little bit of muck that comes off these mats. So, I mean, there's a little bit of sand on the bottom. It's, but it is pure rainwater. Like it doesn't get any fresher than that. And um, wait a minute, man, this is, this, was not cold for, but this is the best. This is why I do this, man, because this is just, this is living, man. This is exactly why I do this kind of thing. Push yourself and you get rewarded like this, man. It's the freshest water straight from the sky. I couldn't ask for anything better. So I'm gonna put this into another bottle, put a cap on it, and I'll leave this set up overnight. Hopefully it keeps raining and I'll just wake up and I'll keep changing bottles and see how many bottles we can fill up over the night. But um. For now, that is it. I'll see you guys in the morning. I'm just gonna bunk up in here. I'm not no longer gonna use this stuff as a mattress. I'm gonna um, leave it here, set up as a water catching device. I'm just gonna sleep on the sand. We've done it before, it's not too bad. And um, I guess I'll see you guys in the morning. Tomorrow is all about starting fire, catching some sort of a food. So stoked we got water and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so happy we got the water. Yeah. Oh. Good morning to ya. 6.21 in the morning. Man, that was, I wouldn't even call that sleeping last night. Oh, fuck it, I've got sand everywhere. That was a bad sleep, dude. I wouldn't even have called that sleeping, to be honest. I was getting so smoked by mosquitoes, so. Oh, I had to like bury my legs in the sand. Once I buried my legs in the sand, it actually, it actually wasn't too bad, but Definitely, definitely wasn't a good sleep. Rain was on, the rain was off. Oh, it's an absolutely beautiful day. I probably had about an hour's sleep, to be honest. Oh. All right, so we had a fair bit of rain. Like, not a fair bit of rain, but it was raining consistently on and off, like an hour of rain. And that's what we got last night before I actually fell asleep, so that's not too bad. That's half a bottle of water there. I cannot lose that, that is valuable. That's a lot of water, man. Ooh, uh, wake up. That's in my, that's amazing. Okay, so yesterday when we were walking around this reef system here, there is nothing to eat. There is not even like little shells. There is pa practically nothing. It's like a dead bear reef. Pretty much what it looks like. <clears throat> there is just nothing to eat on this reef. There's not even sea cucumbers, sea urchins. There is nothing here to eat at all. It's just dead. So what I reckon I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna concentrate my time in ta untangling that fishing line that we found yesterday. So where we found that squid jig, where I was cutting off that white rope, there is a heap of um, fishing line. It looks like braided line and also monofilament line. It's all just tangled up in a big bunch. So it's just over there. I'm gonna go start sorting that out. If we can gather 
10 meters, 20 meters of line, possibly even more. There's a lot of line there. I'm gonna see if I can go out to one of these ledges today, make some sort of a fishing lure, maybe even try to use that squid jig. We'll see if we can get some form of a fish, but obviously right now it's dead low tide. That tide is gonna push in really fast, and once that tide pushes in, it's gonna give us a chance to fish off that ledge there. So definitely need to get food today, definitely need to start a fire. <sighs> This one stick is actually pretty incredible. So this is the stick which we found that squid jig on yesterday. I've just hung that squid jig, squid jig in the corner of our little house there. But So this one stick holds a whole lot of line which is gonna come in very, very, it's actually the perfect stick. It's got different, every like meter there's a different section of some sort of fishing line or line or rope or there's a little net. It's very, very handy. So it's a full stick of all different kinds of material which is wrapped up, stuck around it. I don't even know, there's so many different types of rope, but what's definitely got my interest is, hold on, bear with me. Somewhere here there is like a monofilament line, here it is. So you get this, that's like a monofilament leader sort of fishing line there. There's quite a bit of that tangled up in this white rope. And then you come down here to this brown, greenish rope, there's this braid a big bird nest of fishing braid which continues up into this pile as well all this fishing this is what i want this is that line that i want to sort of untangle all that untangle all of that it continues up here all into this like fishing net sort of stuff so there is a lot of fishing line i've just got to take my time go through it untangle it all and then on the end of the exact same stick there's a fishing float and then there's this greenish reddish colored material which is a very, very similar material to that stuff we used to catch the long time in previous videos. So, see how it's really small in fibers? This could be good to catch a couple of long time later. So that's sort of where I'm heading right now, but who knows, we could find fishing hooks tangled up in this. I hope so, but I don't think, I don't know. I'm just gonna take my time now, go through this, and um, that's what we're doing for the next couple of hours. Just untangling all that fishing line. All right, we are about to embark on quite the journey. So I've probably sat here for a good part of all of about an hour and a half, untangling the line, cutting it, tying it together, trying to make it as long as possible. So what we've got right now is this little drink bottle. Probably I'm gonna guess that's about 25 meters of line. It's, it's in really, really bad condition. There was a lot of parts that I had to cut, join together. And then um, I've had to join on that monofilament line, so I've just done a little bit of an FG knot there. Monofilament line onto the bottle, purely because we are only targeting long tom right now. So long tom have quite sharp teeth if they're the bigger ones, and if, it's, if their teeth hit this braid, it's gonna bite straight through. So luckily we found this. There's actually a lot of this on, the, on this beach here, unfortunately. And here is that green, fluffy, I don't know, it's like a, it's almost like a, a ripped up t-shirt or some sort of material that's there's a lot of that on the end of that stick so i'm just going to take that with us chuck that in the bag we've got our bottle we've got a bottle of water and um we're going to have to go walk up into the bush here into the jungle walk all the way around and i want to get onto this cliff here because you can see the current the current's pushing that way so um that's what we're going to do right now hopefully we get a big long time come back here cook him up that's the plan anyway Okay, the mission through the jungle is real right now. We need to walk our ways up through the jungle here, all the way up along the top, around the back of this big cliff. Finally, we'll get to where the water's pushing and hopefully we can chuck this little, little bit of fabric in that current and it'll just act like a little bait fish. Fingers crossed, long time comes up, boom, we get a fish to eat. If not, we're gonna have to make our way all the way back down here, think of a plan B, but I'm gonna give myself a good I don't know, I'm gonna give myself a good five hours at this and just consist consistently just concentrate on trying to get a fish this morning. Um, if not, I'm not sure how we're gonna, else we're gonna get food right now. I'm hungry, it's still early in the day and um, 
We've got a little bit of a steam ahead of us through this jungle, so times are good. And we've got water, that's the main thing now. All right, we've just come down to where I was thinking about going fishing. Right now it is raining, which is an amazing thing because I've got that water catchment set up still. So we can be fishing now and we are always generating water well, every time it rains anyway. So every time I have a mouthful of water here, I'm gaining water back at camp, which is absolutely epic. But this is where I wanted to come down and fish here. And um, man, it's gonna look a lot harder than I originally anticipated. It's not going to be as easy as I thought at all. <laughs> and then again, nothing's easy out here. Okay, so here's the materials that we've got. There's a little bit of red, red snot here. I'll try the red first. If that doesn't work, we'll use the green. And um, what I've done, I've collected a bottle of rocks. So I'm just going to tie this line, not tie it, but wrap it around there. And then I'm just going to I'm just going to throw the rock and hopefully it takes out the little bit of fabric with it and then I'll pull it hopefully the rock drops to the bottom and I can just like dance that skirt in this current I don't know it's a bloody long shot it's actually a very very long shot now that I'm looking at what we've got to deal with but right now this is our only option unless we do a massive massive walk I don't feel like doing that so I'm going to give it a shot Yes. Oh, this is sketchy, man. quick update it is absolutely piping bloody hot right now I had to go for a walk I found some disgusting bit of fabric in the bush over here my neck is burnt to pieces like it's sting it actually stings just to touch it I've been here for all right so the time now is two o'clock in the afternoon I've practically been here the entire day I've had one long time come up and have a sniff um, Right now, the current is just starting to work in my favor. So, the most of the day I've been throwing the rocks out and then just twitching this little bit of fabric back. Um, I've had one long time in probably the last half an hour. It came in full speed, had a look and then turned off. But there's definitely fish here. The current's starting to work in my favor. I no longer have to use rocks. I can just let the wind flat, like the wind just lets it lay down on the water. Then the current takes it out nicely and I can just slowly twitch it in the current. So. Look, I am starving. I've eaten absolutely nothing all day yesterday. Now it's, the, now it's today, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I've still eaten no food. I'm rationing that water out as much as I can, but I'm not giving up. I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna stay consistent. And um, look, I'm gonna give it two more hours. If I don't get a fish in two hours, we're gonna have to go back to camp and try to think of something else. But I do have faith in this. I just gotta put in the time, the effort and um, I know doing things like this isn't easy. So I have noticed up here that there's cactus, which is edible. We've eaten this cactus before in my video like this. So maybe we can eat one of these cactus so we can boil these up on the fire, on a fire. We can eat that cactus leaf. That's definitely edible. There's a couple of things that are edible that I can see there's goat's foot up there. There is a couple of bits of edible food around here, but right now, I'm just gonna stay consistent. I'm gonna hold off on eating. I really, really wanna try to get a long time. So I'm just gonna stay consistent. It is scorching hot. The rain's completely obviously gone and um, it is hard work, man. Man, the struggle is seriously real right now. If you guys are new to the channel, you've never seen 
fishing with cotton before, you're probably thinking that I'm some sort of drongo, but it is a very, very successful way to catch long time just using a piece of cotton like this. So if you guys are an OG follower on the channel, thank you, love you, but you guys will know that this works very, very well for long time. Pretty much every single bite, you'll get a, you'll get a hook up. So unfortunately today, I don't know what's going on. There's just no long time around. There's just nothing around at all. I'm finding it hard to find any kind of energy to do anything right now. I'm just so thirsty, so hungry. My stomach's like eating itself away. And um, I don't know, man, we're gonna have to put our thinking caps on soon. But the problem is that it's still, it's a really high tide right now. And um, the current here, it's pretty much just forced me to stop fishing. It is insanely, I don't know if it look, looks crazy on the camera, but this current here, it's just pushing through. It's just pushing down so fast. Every now and then you get these big waves that are crashing up against this rock. It's just, it's just not really fishable for this little setup that I'm using. So I'm going to have to pack up. We'll head back to camp and we're just going to have to somehow kind of think of, think of a way. I'll try to scavenge food or I don't know. This is definitely the challenge right now. After spending six hours of fishing on the rocks, I've just returned to our base camp, which doesn't really look like a base camp anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're kidding. So obviously today, it is a much bigger swell. The tides are smaller, but the swell is bigger. And our home that we built is now a crushed up pile of leaves and bamboo sticks on a deserted beach. You have got to be kidding me, man. All I can do is laugh. I can't do anything else except for laugh and slap myself in the face because yesterday I said to myself, you are setting this up too close to the ocean, but I knew we were on the arse end of a full moon, which means the tides are only going to get lower. And last night I slept here. We were fine. We were safe. We were dry. And, um, one thing that I just didn't think about is I can't, I don't have any way to check swell. I don't have phone reception. I don't even have a phone. So that's just the way it is out here. That's what happens. And it's obviously what's happened. All you can do is laugh, man. I've had the most horrendous day ever. <laughs> this is our house, dude. Oh no, look. That's our tin, which had our dry, that had our dry coconut husk in it. Our helmet's gone. The squid jig's probably gone. You have got to be kidding. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus Christ, it did a good job of, it's like a massive tangled up bundle of, oh. My goodness. Oh no! You're an idiot! No! I'm an absolute idiot. All right, so yesterday, so this morning, when I had that little shelter there, I left the squid jig in a plastic bag with my, with the bloody power bank and the GoPro tra charging cord. Because tonight I was going to come back and charge all my batteries. Which means the, the power bank is either in here or out there somewhere. You've got to be kidding me. All right, this is the face of somebody who's been defeated. 
So not only did we lose the shelter, not only did we lose the power bank and we lost the GoPro charging cord, we've also lost all of my drinking water. So when I went fishing, I thought it was a very, very smart idea to leave that rain catchment set up. So while we were fishing, it was catching water, which it would have been doing until the swell came in and took it away. So no, no shelter, no way to charge my batteries and no water. That's all the water I've got left from what we harvested last night. So look, I don't know. I have been absolutely defeated here. On an upside, there is an upside to every story and the hoodies for the online shop are extremely close. So if you guys want to get any merch, hats, long sleeve tees, the hoodies are on their way, bucket hats are on their way very, very bloody soon. So that's a little bit of excitement. I always try to find a positive way on the other side of something that's negative, but guys, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm gonna call it, I've been defeated. Am I even kidding right now? I'm trying to find the power bank, but I think that I have got absolute bucklers trying to find that right now. Look at this mess, dude. It's like a bloody hurricane comes through and ripped down our house. All right, so what are the three things, or what, probably more than three, what things have I learned from this little experience? The first thing, which I know and I did anyway, never set up your camp too close to the bloody ocean. I was relying purely on tides as we're on the back of a full moon. It means the tides are only gonna get lower, lower and lower. So I definitely didn't think about swell. Second thing that I should have thought about is when I was generating that fresh water over there, I should have, as, as I had like this much, this much in the bottle, I should have been putting that into another bottle, putting the empty bottle back at the catchment thing. If I did that, I would have probably a whole entire bottle of drinking water right now. So that was a massive mistake. The other mistake is, if you have only one way of charging your only battery, don't leave it here and walk all the way onto the cliff because now I've got no way of charging my batteries and I've got half of one battery left. So that absolutely sucks. And the last thing, now this is a very bloody important thing. So take note, if you're gonna be wearing wet shorts for two days and they're gonna be sandy and slimy, please, pack a little bit of rash cream because right now I've got rash on my ass cheeks. I haven't eaten anything in two days. I'm dehydrated and I don't have a house. <laughs> it is, it is, this is literally like, I, I actually do feel pretty bloody haggard right now, but this is the reality of it all. And um, this is why I do it. I like, to, I like to challenge myself. And today we have been defeated. I obviously can't film too much longer because I've got half of this battery left and I've got no more what batteries, so. I'm gonna have to love yous, leave yous, and um, Mother Nature, you beat us this time, you beautiful thing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, thank you for all the support, and um, yeah, absolutely, buddy, love yous. See you guys. Yo.